Iris's words seem to echo against the walls, and no one moves as they attempt to process what was just said. Flick is still holding the cassette player. He gently sends it back down where he found it, being uncharacteristically gentle with how he handles it. So... We all heard that, right? Flick nods, eyes glancing back towards the cassette he just put down. Lucia nods as well, hands still clutching the flashlight, while Matt tries to catch Mickey's eyes. Mickey's back is facing the group as he stares at the words on the wall. Eventually, Lucia clears her throat, trying to capture the group's attention. Someone knew that we would be here. Iris. What? They said their name was Iris. This Iris person freak or whatever knew we'd be here. Matt, don't call them that. What if they can hear us? So? What are they going to do about that? We don't even know this person, right? Lucia and Flick nod their heads again in silent agreement, but Mickey doesn't react, still staring at the writing on the wall as if it held some explanation to what was happening. Matt tries to capture his attention, but is ignored as he takes a step forward to touch the wall. Uh, Mickey, hey! What are you doing? It's drying. (laughs) What? The, The paint, or whatever they used. It didn't come off. It's dry, so they were here a while ago. Obviously. Dude, they left us a message. It doesn't matter when they were here. This Iris person knew we would be here, so... So what? What? Are are you even listening? This, This person was waiting for us. They knew you were friends with Jamie. We have to leave. Are you even listening? This could be a clue. This person could have something we need to find Jamie, or... They have supplies. If we... Mickey, uh, you need to calm down. That wasn't just a message. That was a threat. Iris isn't our friend. There's someone who's not happy with us. I'm on Matt's side. We should just leave. And then what? We leave and they follow? They said that they'd follow us no matter what. I think we should just find them first. What? You can't be serious. You think... Chasing this person is going to solve anything? They literally have the upper hand on us. They are going to help us. It's like Lucia said. They're mad at us. They said we took their stuff. And they they said that they'd be sending people here. They probably aren't alone. And what are we supposed to do if they're everywhere like they said? What do we do? We leave! That's what we do! Let's just get our stuff And go! Why are you so focused on leaving? Let's just take a minute to think this through. You were the one so ready to chase this Iris around. It's kind of hard to take you seriously right now. So what? We all listen to you? Guys, stop! Penny isn't gonna help us! Then what will? Mickey's lost it! Matt! Stop! Mickey's right. We need a minute to think this through, but not here. Let's just leave and keep looking. Maybe we'll find some stuff to take. We can't stay here forever, though. Eventually, we have to leave. No one answers her. Mickey and Matt are glaring daggers at each other, while Flick nervously stares at the two. Eventually, Mickey just huffs. Seeing that she's serious, he turns to face her. Fine. But we aren't leaving until we finish looking through every room. He gives Matt a cold look and gets an eye roll in return. (sighs) Fine! The two exit the room, still bickering as they walk down the hallway looking for anything they could have missed earlier. Lucia and Flick are quick to follow, Lucia grabbing the set tape on her way out. Together, the group of four look around, completely unaware of what Iris has in store for them as they move. As they wander through the tower, a team not so far away from them lurks with their own plans in their own tower. Though their tower isn't beaten down and abandoned, here it's lit up with lights and power. The first room down the hall of the tower holds three people, sitting across from each other at the table. A phone lays in the center of the table. A familiar voice comes from it. They're refusing to move too far from their position. They will need to be 
Persuaded. Fourth Eye, move out. Lead the twins. They can handle themselves while you're gone. The largest of the three figures stands up and exits the room. They leave the twins sitting by the phone, waiting patiently for their orders. As for you two, I trust you can watch the tower without supervision. Do not break that trust. Iris, out. The twins look at one another and look back. They know that Iris is never truly out. Though not there physically, Iris is always watching through the cameras hidden around the tower. The twins quickly move, knowing the position of every camera in the tower. They go to a blind corner and begin discussing their next move. The twins had never been trustworthy. It was only a week ago when this brother and sister pairing had entered the radius of protection. Tired, hungry, they stumbled towards the second ulterior tower. This one, unlike the third, was occupied. Come on, we need to get to the tower. Are you sure it'll have the supplies we need? Of course not, but this is the best chance we have. I still don't believe you. I know you don't, but it's better than nothing. Katie gives him a look, making it obvious she doesn't agree in the slightest, but doesn't say anything more. Sneaking towards the tower, they notice this one is covered in spikes and eyes. Cameras pepper the outside of it, obvious in the midday heat. The door stands, foreboding, with an open slit for yet another pair of eyes, watching closely as the twins approach. Once they reach the door, Charlie reaches into his bag and reveals a hammer and chisel. Just as he's about to break the lock, a voice booms out. You dare tamper with the altar of the eye? Charlie, startled, jumps back from the door. Katie draws a small shank made of broken glass and holds it up. We're not scared of you. Katie, do not threaten random strangers. He threatened us first. Well, they obviously don't like someone trying to break their lock, and honestly, it makes perfect sense that they may be angry. Well, hello, stranger. Excuse us, we thought no one was home. You didn't knock. True. What do you want? Just food and water. We've been walking for a very long time and our supplies are running low. We aren't here to cause trouble. That is acceptable. Come inside. The large door clicks as it unlocks. Opening slowly, the door reveals a large cloaked figure smiling at them from the darkness of the interior. The cloak is black, covered in drawings of eyes. The face behind it is handsome, if pale. The only noticeable flaw is a pair of bloodshot eyes. Charlie and Katie look at each other, passing a silent message between them. They walk inside and are met with an altar. A large mural painted up the full interior wall of that tower. It depicts a tower and a dungeon underneath it, full of mythical beasts. And beneath that, a giant glowing eye. A table with an old rotary phone sits underneath the mural. A second figure stands underneath, praying. You are not familiar with the story of Iris, are you? No, no we aren't. He pauses, suddenly anxious. Katie elbows him. B but tell us, please tell us. The cloaked figure nods and takes a deep breath. Long ago, before the collapse, Iris watched from above. Iris broadcasted their message to the world. But the message was unheard. The warnings were ignored. Iris built their labyrinth, slowly, so that no one would be able to find them once they all went looking. And they did. Now, Iris watches from below. The web of eyes securing their kingdom, the grand eyes, such as myself, hearing the warnings. Intruders become eyes themselves, or succumbing to the heat and the dogs. And now, you see your situation. Katie, horrified, takes out the glass shank again. Taking a step back, she holds it out in the air. You won't be holding us hostage. You will not trap us here. I'm leaving. We are leaving. Katie, calm down. What? You want me to be calm after all that? I'm calm. I am so, 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 so calm. I'm very calm. I'm so calm that I'll be able to stab better. Uh, we, we aren't stabbing anyone. You aren't stabbing anyone, maybe. Uh, 
please excuse us for a second, um, sir. Call me Craig. Uh, okay, Craig. Charlie takes Katie out behind the tower, covering his face so that no cameras can read his lips. The cameras still hear him, as quiet as he is. We can use this. We can use them. They obviously have supplies, cameras, resources. And? And as long as we play along, we can take all of it. After a few minutes, the twins finish their conversation and walk back into the tower. They sit through more of the Third Eye's ranting, wide-eyed and attentive. They don't know it yet. They are already lost. And I am waiting.